officially starting Project Winter Survival, 10th year. Jody Steinhauer and her team are gearing up for one of their biggest campaigns of the year. There you go. All right. Project Winter Survival has been around for the past 10 years, and the idea is simple. Provide the homeless with a backpack filled with common necessities and a sleeping bag as they prepare to hunker down for a long, cold winter. If this can help someone survive an extra couple days until they hopefully will go in and get, you know, get, go and get housing, long-term or short-term, that's what this is all about. Oh, and the founder and president of Bargains Group, a national discount wholesaler, Steinhauer used to volunteer with a similar project that would provide blankets and sleeping bags to the homeless each year. But when the initiative ended, social agencies started looking for someone else to fill the gap. And hence, Project Winter Survival was born. It was really through my business acumen of focus groups finding out, you know, what do these people need? What are the challenges on the streets for the, the ministries, churches and agencies? And it was that day-to-day -day supplies that we take for granted, you know, a pair of gloves, a toque, a toothbrush, things that when you are left homeless or without anything, you don't have. And 10 years ago, uh, we weren't in the same financial position we are now. Um, agencies and shelters were given a lot more donations. So although these were wonderful survival needs, uh, some people did have some of them, but they didn't have all of them. And there was a core group of people that chose not to go into a shelter. Mm. So these kits were an answer to help um, two things, make these people who are living on the streets and don't want to go into a shelter more comfortable from freezing to death in the winter months. And also they act as a tool for an outreach worker, for a communication device to say, hey, how are you doing? Can we get you some health care? Would you like to come inside? It's that vehicle to start off. So every year for the past 10 years, volunteers converge on the Bargains Group warehouse the second week in January to assemble kits, providing social agencies, ministries, and churches with winter survival packages for their homeless outreach programs. Great, really but Jody great, says great this year, the need is even greater. This year, we've been having phone calls as early as July from the agencies asking us, please, Jody, begging, make sure you do it this year because we're going to have a problem. We do not have any supplies. Our budgets have been cut. There's nothing. Each year, we have between six to 7,000 kits actually asked for. So although we're doing a great job here and I'm so proud of what we've done, we are not even able to give out half of what's accurately needed. And those six to 7,000 are, are through the applications that we've vetted that are true, you know, verified people that we would give, agencies we would give the kits to. Mm. So we are able to, hopefully our goal this year is to do 2,500 kits. And so far, we, are, we have enough already for approximately just under 2,000. We are in the home stretch, and uh, the winter is just, just coming out. It's been a late one, uh, but we're hoping people will open up their hearts. And we need to get to that last little bit, because these kits go out, and they have to last the agencies the entire winter. So, Jody, you're going to kind of walk me through a packing of one of the backpacks, right? Yeah, we're okay. going to start right here. All so right. it all starts with a bag. Yes. Okay. So with a brand new bag filled to the brim, each person gets gloves, a toque, a scarf, socks, a toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, deodorant, an insulated coffee mug or water bottle. This backpack is getting pretty heavy. <laughs> Hand sanitizer, Kleenex, a health snack, a bottle of water, and even a rain poncho. Now Jody and her staff prepare over 2,000 winter survival kits to get to the homeless. And it's up to organizations like the Street Connection Ministries and the Salvation Army to make sure they get into the right hands. Oh, they are, they're just like kids at Christmas because they don't, they don't expect it. You know, they, they Pastor know Lenny Whelan is describing the response he gets but, uh, every time he and members of his church they, distribute the winter survival kits to those on the streets. You know, they, they know our car and what we do, but they don't expect things like that, you know. And they'll come up and say, have you got this, have you got that? Well, instead of just giving them the one item that they're asking for, we'll give them the whole kit. And then it's, it's just like you gave them a million bucks. And he should know, 16 years ago, he too 
lived on the streets. Oh, in the winter, it's unless you have that drop-in center or something to go to, you will freeze out there. And a lot of them don't even sit on a street corner and bother to pan either because you're sit, you, you know, you can sit there for three, four hours and, you know, everybody will just walk by you. Uh, you know, they just don't think that, you know, this person needs help. Give them a couple of bucks, you know, at least they can get a coffee and a donut or a, or a hamburger or something and they're eating. Now sober and a pastor at Street Connection Christian Church, he hasn't forgotten where he once was and the help he received to get off the streets. Now he feeds the homeless five days a week. You know, they'll walk around those streets, even I did it myself, thinking nobody loves me, nobody knows who I am, nobody cares, but Jesus cares. Rob Hardy, now the community ministries director of the Salvation Army, was also homeless for a number of years and a heavy drug user as well. Now he too works with the homeless and handing out the winter survival kits is a crucial part of his job. We met at one of Salvation Army's new facilities in downtown Toronto. So Rob, tell me, we're at Harbor Lights. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this building. We just opened this building in May of uh, this year. Wow. And in this building we have 85 bed uh, rehab program for men. And we have a 98 bed transitional housing program. We have immigrant and refugee services, which provides English as a second language to newcomers into this country. Wow. And then we also have a chapel. Uh, our own church is also built into this facility. So Rob, when you're out on the streets mm -hmm. and you're handing out these kits, and today's a rainy day, so yeah. it's not a great day for handing them out. What is the response from those that get these amazing backpacks filled with all of these great things? Joy, yeah. and, uh, and not just joy for them, joy for us, because we mm. get to hand them out. Uh, gives them a little bit of dignity and respect, knowing that they don't have to go and ask for things. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, it does all of that. Uh, the other thing it does for someone is, uh, it allows them to recognize that they can sustain life for another day, mm. right? You know, if, you, if you're out there and you don't have anything, and all of a sudden you're given this knapsack, this backpack, you know that you're gonna be okay tomorrow. Yeah. So it gives them hope. What's one thing that you hope people will remember this Christmas season when they see the homeless? It's a tough one, but as equals, okay? They are no better, no worse than we, okay? Um, I say that from experience of being living on the street at one time, but I also recognize that when you're when you treat them as an equal, it lifts them up. Mm. And that's what we need to do. We need to build, not tear down. Mm. And that's exactly what Jody's dream was 10 years ago when Project Winter Survival first launched. Create an opportunity for the homeless to know, especially during the winter months, that they are cared for and not forgotten. And as Jody and her team charge forward this winter to make their goal and hopefully even surpass it, she knows it can only be done with the help of others this Christmas season. I'm all about a movement of creating uh, a difference in our communities. It's helping in any way you can make your community a stronger, you know, more beautiful place. It's not too late to help Project Winter Survival this winter. If you want to find out how, go to our website at 100huntley.com. In Toronto, Ontario, Magdalene John, 100 Huntley Street.